Coming up this week on Geared Up on GeekWire, iPhone 8 revealed. That's right. You got, Big leaks happen. That's right. Big leaks, and we got some mock-ups here in the studio. The answer and winner to our Amazon Echo Show trivia giveaway and the best $125 smartphone we've ever used. Mm -hmm. Not saying much, but <laughs> whatever. It's a pretty great <laughs> smartphone. I think it's going to become the go-to for a lot of people who aren't into paying Sure. Tons and tons and hundreds and hundreds of right, dollars. Right, so right, definitely. That's a new phone that I'm holding right here in my hand. We're going to be talking about it later on in the show. From GeekWire.com in Seattle, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's start with the iPhone 8, The iPhone Andrew. 8, big one. Yeah, so big there, news. there was a leak this past week. Mm -hmm. Catch me up on this, because I did not follow this closely. Yeah, definitely. So Apple basically, you know, when they when they go to WWDC, they start releasing developer betas of Mac OS and iOS um, and tvOS and watchOS. So developers can start making their apps compatible or create new apps for these new, you know, for the new software. And apparently Apple released some HomePod firmware um, that was probably supposed to be for internal only, but they released it on the public developer you know platform so developers were able to download this and what they what apple will do when they put out a public beta or a developer beta is they redact and they remove everything that's secret or that hasn't been announced yet about upcoming devices especially but since this one wasn't supposed to be public anyway they didn't redact anything so developers got this and they went through all the code and we found a bunch of stuff out about the upcoming iPhone that no longer is rumor because these things actually came from Apple themselves. In the code. In and the so code. For people who are just catching up on this, the HomePod is this new Echo-like device, this new home speaker that Apple's going to come right. out with. But presumably in the software development kit and all of the code for this device, it has connections to the iPhone. Right, because it's all running iOS. So you know the iOS version has all the code needed you know, in iOS for everything. So effectively, that code was leaked Yes, well in advance of the actual iPhone 8 release. Right. Accidentally leaked by Apple and poured through by developers. So what did we learn? We learned, I have 10 things that we learned about the upcoming iPhone. Let's hear it. But yes. you know, one thing we can also let people know is we also have these mock-ups here in the studio. This is what the iPhone, I'm going to call it the iPhone 8 Pro. Because I don't think Apple is going, this is this is an aside, I don't think Apple is going to release an iPhone 7S, 7S Plus, and 8. That makes no sense. It tells you that the 7S is old and 8 is new. Who would want to buy that? I think they're going to go either iPhone, iPhone Plus, and iPhone Pro, or iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 8 Pro. Perhaps dropping Put the numbers. Put them all on the same level. So let's explain what we're holding here. And yes. for people who are on the podcast or the radio show, let's describe it. This is effectively a mock-up that yes. you had done. Mm -hmm. based on the leaked specs That's of correct. the iPhone 8 Pro. Right, exactly. So what, what does this mock-up tell you? It seems pretty light Right. In my well, hand. well, there's no battery in there's here. No battery. This, okay. this does not turn on. It's just the external casing. But, you know, you can look at that while we go through these 10 things because some of these things will, you know, kind of yeah. match up with what we're seeing here. So the first thing um, is they had icons for like when you plug in your phone and stuff that show up in iTunes, the icons for the new phone were in there, and they look exactly like this white phone you're holding here, showing the notch and showing the very minimal bezel. So the first thing we learned is that the bezels are shrinking and almost going away completely. So this is a theme we've talked about a lot on the show. This is going to allow you to have larger screen sizes on smaller devices because yes. the borders of the phone are shrinking. Right, and if I don't know if they can see this, but if we hold this up, um, I'm holding up right now an iPhone 7 Plus. And next to it is the iPhone 8 mock-up. If I put them next to each other, you can see the display. So this is a much smaller phone. So the new phone is a much smaller piece of hardware, right. but the screen is it's actually bigger. bigger. It's bigger than the phone, the screen on the iPhone 7, uh, 7 Plus. So it's a 5.5-inch display on the 7 Plus. And I think what we're seeing here is a 5.8-inch display. Okay. So bigger display, uh, more room, and the bezels are pretty much eliminated completely. So that's the first thing we learned. Next is there will be this camera notch. People were wondering, they were like, I don't think Apple's going to put that ugly camera notch on the front of the phone, but there it is. So it's essentially a little indentation the uh, of the bezel that right. goes down into the screen. Right. And you think that's going to be there. I don't think anymore. I know because that is what was in the leaked firmware. Interesting. So we know that that's going to be there. And if you look at it, there's four different uh 
holes, if you will, there plus the earpiece. And so three of so one of those is going to be your camera, your front facing camera, and three of them are going to be the 3D detection. So that's going to be for identifying you. So facial recognition? Facial recognition. That would be, yes, that would be something that is coming. Um, the screen will be higher resolution. So it's not just a bigger display, but it's a higher resolution display. Um, I believe the screen resolution that we found, yeah, it is 1125 by 2436. So this is all information that we're getting from this leaked That's right. code from Apple. So 1134 by 20, 1125 by 2436, whereas the previous phone is uh, 1080 by 1920. So it's a 1080p display going up to an 1125p display, if you will. And different form factor, too. It's an 18 by 9 form factor, so it's, long, it's skinnier and longer. Okay. Interesting. What else did we Next, learn about the iPhone? AR. AR is a big deal. Augmented reality. Augmented reality. So there were some strings found in the leaked firmware that referred to AR face anchor. So that would imply something where AR can lock on to someone's face and then use that, you know, in the we still don't know what AR what all the possibilities of AR are gonna be. I think there's gonna be some amazing stuff, but we at least know that it's not just about the rear camera, but also the front camera, and something about locking onto people's faces and using that within the context of AR is going to be something, something that's happening. Okay. Next, Touch ID is out, and Face ID is in. So Touch ID, the whole idea that you unlock the phone using your fingerprint. Right. Not just unlock the phone, but you make payments with Apple sure. Pay. Anything that, you know, opening up secure apps, you can use your fingerprint. That's all going away. The fingerprint sensor is going away. And in place of that, going back to that notch at the top, is going to be, I don't know if Face ID is not what they're actually calling it. They're actually calling it Pearl ID or Pearl Identification. Might just be a code name. I don't know. But this is going to be used to identify you. So you can, you can identify, you can, you can save different faces. So it could be you and let's just say your spouse. If you want both, you'd be able to unlock the phone. Um, but it's biometric. So it's using, I think, 200 different points of data on your face. And I think the message that Apple's going to be using is this is faster and more secure than Touch ID. Because I think some people are going to be like, what the heck? Like, I'm used to using the fingerprint. It's easy. So basically, Apple is copying Microsoft here yet again. How so? How well, so? Windows Hello. Have you heard of Windows Hello? This is how you know half the world is unlocked. I've heard of their, Windows Hello, their... but Windows Hello is not 3D facial mapping. Windows Hello is 2D, which is why you can hold up a picture and log in as somebody. With 3D facial mapping, it knows the depth of your eyes versus your cheekbones versus your nose versus your mouth versus your chin, et cetera. So it actually gets a 3D model. And so if you hold up a picture that's only 2D, it's not going to work. Is that I'm really saying. true about the picture? I think that might be an urban yes, legend. Yes, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to yes. look that up during it's the break. It's worked. Uh, pictures have here. worked on both uh, unlocking Windows Hello as well as Samsung devices. So, you know, that's not to say that improvements aren't going to be made across the board. This isn't just an Apple exclusive technology. But up until now, facial recognition has been fairly, I wouldn't say easy. That might be too strong a word. But it has been defeatable by just holding up a picture of someone, whereas this would not be. You would okay. need like a 3D model of their head okay. to get past that. All right. We got two minutes left in this segment. Two so minutes what, left? What are, your what? Next, what are your next two favorite? The home button's gone. Home button's gone. So not only is Touch ID gone, but the home button is gone. So there's probably going to be a digital home button. And they found, um, you know, references to a digital home button here at the bottom. So what the assumption is is that the top notch is going to be software on both sides. And then the bottom is going to be some sort of similar to a touch bar on the MacBook Pro here on the iPhone. And then the center will be your actual display. And there will be a virtual home button there that will not take your fingerprint okay remind me again when does the iphone 8 get announced when does it come out do we know at this point they haven't announced the dates but what we do know is i mean more than likely it's like clockwork every september it gets announced and roughly 10 days later it releases it usually releases on a friday and the new ios comes out on wednesday so I would wager to say the second or third Wednesday of next month will be iOS 11, and then the following Friday, two days later, will be the new iPhone. Okay. And uh, Lisa Cunningham on the Facebook live stream is asking, when is the iPhone 8 coming out? So we just answered that. And yep. is it true that there will be an anniversary edition iPhone before that? Uh, no, there will not be an anniversary edition. Um, I think basically the new iPhone Pro version is going to be what they tout as 
you know, 10 years of experience has led us to this. Gotcha. So, so there will be the, you know, the, the typical 4.7 and 5.5 inch phones that we have now. Those will be updated. And then here's our brand new form factor. Okay. Yeah. Very, very good stuff. All right. So that is a little bit of a sneak peek of the iPhone 8 Pro, as we're yes. calling it. Actual name to be determined, mm -hmm. but very interesting. And we will link from the show notes to that giant leak that came out uh, right. sort of inadvertently from Absolutely. Apple. And uh, we'll also get some pictures of your mock-ups here, Andrew, to, to show yeah. folks. Just go to geekwire.com, look for the microphone in the upper right-hand corner to find out uh, all of that through the show notes on this episode. Tubes. Let's see. Packy Reagan says here. Samsung 8 Plus is the phone to beat. It's Are funny, they bringing back the headphone jack? No. <laughs> The headphone jack is disappearing from the next Pixel as well, and probably the Note 8 will also not have a headphone yeah, jack. Headphone jacks are gone. Um, how big is the screen on an iPhone 8? Uh, I believe 5.8. Uh, what else? Oh. Some some t-shirt. Isn't that the, like the greatest t -sh the greatest Seahawks t-shirt? That is the Andrew Edwards Seahawks t-shirt. That's t right. That's basically, right. it's That's a wrestling mask. Exactly, it's a wrestling mask. So I had to represent myself Where, somehow. Where'd you in get there. that? Uh, I think Target. <laughs> that that's that simple. Your secret? That's simple. No, Target <laughs> is not my secret at all. Uh, I just happened to be there and notice it. Uh, okay. Uh, um, price. People are asking about pricing. I think yeah. the iPhone 8 is going to be. So people are thinking it's going to be the new phone this year. So it will be priced similar to every new phone. But again, they're releasing new versions of the 4.7 and 5.5 as well. So those are going to be the same price: 650 and 750 starting points, up to uh, 969. For the high end of the 5.5 inch, I think we're going to see the new model um, probably start. And this is a guess, right? Like 1199, 1199 for the let's just say 64 gigs, 1299 for uh, the I've, 256. I've had cars that cost less than that, Andrew. You've had cars that cost yes. Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, what is really? this guy driving? I'm, in my life, in my life, okay. I have had cars that cost less than okay. that. Okay, so you're I'm not sorry. buying it. That's not too buying much it. for a phone. See, here's the thing. Here's my. I understand what people say is too much for a phone. First of all, the Galaxy or the Galaxy Note 8 is also going to be pretty expensive, and that being announced next week, I'll be there for that. But there's nothing I use more than my phone. Tr true, I don't use my true. computer that I paid, let's just say, three thousand dollars for. I use this less than my phone. So why would I have why don't I have a problem paying three thousand dollars for a computer, but I have a problem paying okay. twelve hundred dollars for a phone I use like all day every day. I know. And it's too geared up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right, it is time for the answer and the winner from last week's geared up trivia challenge. What are we giving away? We are giving away an Amazon Echo Show. Echo Show. This of course is the first Touchscreen Echo device right. from Amazon with drop-in support. That's right. And we we with, have it pre-programmed so that we can it. drop in on you. That's right. That's right. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so Amazon had rights to the name. Mm -hmm. So if you ask him originally how he came up with the name Alexa, it was from the Library of Alexandria, which was sort of one of the top libraries. Uh, sort of back in the day wow. uh, of, of ancient times. Yeah, I, think yeah. it's, I think it was from Greece. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was sort of the inspiration for the Alexa name. And, and if you uh, do some research, Amazon executives have similarly cited uh, the that it dates back to the Library of Alexandria. Okay. So some of them say, I think incorrectly, that it's the Library of Alexander, but, but it's in fact Alexandria. We accepted any, ver any variation of, of that answer. Interesting. I wouldn't accept Alexander. <laughs> it, that's wrong that's right so our winner congrats to our winner who was selected who at random from the pool of correct answers brian o'keefe brian o'keefe that's right brian you are now the proud owner of an amazon echo show okay so we're reaching out to brian we are getting his information brian, uh, if you haven't already seen an email from me check it and okay. uh, it'll be there waiting for you so congrats congrats to you all right we'll do an, we should do another giveaway soon yeah Absolutely. Always. People thanks, love those. Thanks to everybody who entered, and I uh, hope you tune back in and, and check out the next giveaway. Yes. All right, let's talk about this phone I'm holding in my hands. All right. This, not the iPhone 8. Not this the iPhone 8. This is like the total opposite of it the is. iPhone 8. This is my kind of phone, Andrew. Oh, man. This is the T-Mobile Revel. T-Mobile Revel. R-E-V-V-L. And one, so one thing that sticks out to me immediately is that it's not branded with like an LG, Samsung, you know, Huawei, whatever. It's T-Mobile's own 
smartphone. That's right, exactly. They had this actually, they, it was manufactured by one of the, the sure. hardware manufacturers, but it was effectively white labeled to T-Mobile. Okay. And this is a great phone for somebody who just wants a nice smartphone without paying a ton of money. Okay. $125. Or five dollars a month if you do a, an what? installment on the jump plan. Okay. Yes, five bucks a month. I mean, you could basically even add this to your existing account and hardly right. even notice it. Uh, runs uh, Android Nougat, okay. uh, seven point I believe, uh, and it essentially is everything you would want in a smartphone. So when you say everything you would want, what is the, what are the things you would want in a smartphone? It's got fingerprint recognition. Okay. It's got a five point five inch HD display, thirteen megapixel camera. Okay. 32 gigs of internal uh, oh. memory. It's got night mode, gesture control, Bluetooth 4.2. I mean, this is a wow. nice little phone. Not bad. I, I showed it to my wife last night, and she's got, a, I think, an iPhone uh, 6, regular iPhone 6. Okay. And I was like, what do you think about this? And she compared the screen sizes. It's as big a screen as my iPhone 6S Plus, okay. 5.5 inches, but that the actual device is smaller, much like mm. we were talking about right. earlier. Right, those bezels. Exactly. Those iPhone bezels need to go. Uh so far, the battery life is great. You know, I took this out to um, the Seahawks practice facility when right. you and I went out there today. I uh, used it quite a lot. It's only down to 88%. Wow, after 12% about, battery loss? Yeah, after about, you after know. half a day? Yeah, half 3 a day PM? use. Ex okay. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I'm impressed with this thing. We did a, a photo comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, even at 13 megapixels, it's not quite as nice as you get with the Samsung Galaxy S8. Right. Or the iPhone 7. Seven especially plus. seven plus right uh but i would compare it pretty favorably to what i get on my iphone 6s plus right and when you're talking about the price 125 dollars versus let's just say the starting price of the iphone 7 plus which would be 769 dollars and you talk about the camera quality the price difference yeah. you know you're not it's not like no. it's it's 10 times worse no. it's, it's it's very comparable good. you have to really look at the yeah. pictures one after that's, the other to tell that's the pretty difference. good so I, to me, and you know, the bummer in here is it's only on T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's comparable devices on Verizon and AT&T and Sprint, but it's nice to kind of have a go-to. Like, okay, it, this is almost like it's certified by T-Mobile. Hey, you're going to have a good experience here. Right. W they're going to stand behind it. Uh, you know, you would mm -hmm. assume because they're putting their name on it. Right. I, I just, I, I really like this phone, and frankly, I, I would use this day to day. Hundred twenty five bucks. You yes. found your phone. I might have found my one twenty five. Uh, yeah, that's the hardest part to believe. I mean, I know it's true, but like a a nice phone at that much of a budget price, and not on any sort of you know, it's one hundred twenty five bucks, and you own it outright. That's crazy. So yeah. that's a nice deal. It is um, nice deal. So it, yeah, I'm I'm sold on it. You know, the speed is pretty nice. I don't. Uh, I need to look up the exact processor, but it, it's pretty clearly just a a modern processor. Right. It works fairly well. Um, the one weird thing that you and I noticed, we were at the, the, the game, at the training facility, right? And the Seahawks, and we were taking pictures. And when we had our sunglasses on, we would lift this phone up to take a picture, and the screen would appear to go black. Like as if it just turned off, like dead. And then you'd put it down, and it would look normal. It was, right. There was something weird going on with the polarization on our yeah, lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, if you were holding the phone in portrait mode it looked fine and as soon as you turned it landscape is that to what it was picture, it disappeared yeah and um i don't know what i mean i don't know about polarization or the the, the science behind light but um that was very interesting yeah. yeah i mean not a big deal not a huge deal but just something that stood out yeah all right so that is the t-mobile revel phone we'll link to all the information about this from the show notes hey before we end this segment yeah. since we did give away the amazon uh, alexa uh, Echo Show. Sure. I, I want to show you the, the latest trick. Oh, God. Okay. Oh. Sing the technology song. What the hell is a technology song? Technology. Technology. Where would I be without technology? Without the Wi Fi, I couldn't say hi. As for what? music, I couldn't choose it. Shopping lists would cease to exist, and time would be on your wrist. I thank my lucky stars that I'm here today. I hope that you love me. So that is just a small Who taste did that? Of, the Why? New, of the new Woohoo technology song from Alexa. Alexa Who programmed that in there? Multi talented. Why? 
I, I I don't know, but that's that's a new song that Alexa sings. Oh, just great. so you know, and so if top you, in the charts, you, just if you have an Echo device, you have to say Alexa sing the technology song to get that to do okay, that. Okay, you just said it again. Hopefully, she doesn't do it. <laughs> All right, all right. Welcome back to Geared Up. It's Todd Bishop, Andrew Edwards. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on in your world. Andrew. My world. Yeah, you've been traveling a lot. Oh man, I've been all over the place. Um, yeah. So a couple weeks ago, I went down to San Francisco to do a project with Apple. Um, which involved Apple and Cochlear, which involved their new, Cochlear's new Nucleus 7 sound processor. So this is a device for people who have a Cochlear implant, and it allows them to pair it with an iPhone or iOS device running iOS 10 or above, and they can stream anything from that phone directly to their implant. So basically almost like a Bluetooth headset. So previously they had to kind of, you know, use the speakerphone and hope that they could hear it and it would be a very poor experience and now they can facetime do phone calls do um you know listen to music podcasts etc streamed right to the right to their head um the cool thing about that though is not only can they control that and the volume etc like we could do if we were wearing bluetooth headphones but they can also independently control the volume of the world around them so for example if you're sitting in a meeting in a boring meeting you and not you or i could not put on a pair of Bluetooth headphones and just start listening to a podcast. It would be rude. For them, though, they could completely mute out the, the room and turn on their favorite podcast and just be sitting in the room. Wow. And you would never know because you can't hear it because it's going directly into their brain. So this is essentially for people who have, obviously, hearing impairments yes. and have cochlear implants. That's right. And it sounds like it's better than actual ears. It, yeah, it sounds like superhuman hearing. Like yeah. it's it, once I once I heard about it, like it's weird because there's never been a disability that I've ever looked at and like kind of said, oh, I wish I had that because then I could get the fix for it. You know what I mean? Like it's weird. Like that shows the power of this technology because I the question was even brought up like could someone with no hearing loss just pay for this surgery to get that implant and the answer was no um but you know when you hear that you can manage the volume of the world around you and your devices independently that was very cool very cool so i went down there to to learn about it and to also s experience someone getting it turned on for the first time and seeing their what reaction was that like? it was amazing like she she called her dad I think she was like in her early 20s. So like she was she had a cochlear implant previously, but this one is so much clearer, so much better. Um, so she made a phone call to her dad and she listened to music for the first time through it. And like you could just see on her face like the joy and like she you could tell she was about to cry, but she didn't want to. But like just seeing that and being there uh, was cool. So I do have a video that I'm hopefully releasing this week on Friday um, of that whole experience. Wow. Yeah. So very that was the cool. first thing I did. It was very cool. It was like uh, it was humbling to be able to be there for that. And then you went to Disney World. Then I went to Disneyland. 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 So Disney uh, invited me down. They wanted to show um, basically your kids having a good time at Disney. Like So they chose some influencers to invite down. Um, so they covered the trip and the entrance into the park. And um, But it just so happens to coincide with uh, the release of their Max Pass. I don't know if you've heard about this or not. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Uh, as a kid. Okay. I grew up in Southern California. So it's been a long time then years. as a child. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get on a ride previously, you would have to like go to the ride, and if it was full, you would get a Fast Pass. And then you hold on to the Fast Pass, and it tells you what time to come back. But in order to get that, you have to physically go to the ride and get the Fast Pass. And if they ran out, you were done. So now they just launched this thing called Max Pass, where you use your smartphone and the Disneyland app. And for $10 per day, you can get your Fast Passes on your smartphone and get something called Photo Pass, which is all the pictures they take of you, whether you're on the ride or there's photographers all over the park. And so for 10 bucks, you can be, you know, because they have two parks, Disneyland and California Adventure. So you can be in California Adventure and get a Fast Pass to something in Disneyland without having to physically go to the kiosk anymore. So I did a review on how that process worked, what it looked like. It was definitely a time saver and uh, saved a lot of walking. Um, so yeah, that's what I did over there with Disney. And the travel's not done though. Like there's the Galaxy S8. Yeah, so let's talk Note about what's 8. coming up. Galaxy Note 8 launches next week. I'm gonna be there in New York City for that. I'm also doing a project with WWE for SummerSlam. I'm this is check out World, Res World Wrestling Entertainment. World Wrestling Entertainment. They are launching the WWE 2K18 video game. 
And so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get one of the early hands on for WWE 2K18 to be a professional wrestler. How many people know that I used to be a pro wrestler? He knows. Malik knows. But yes, so we're gonna have the what was WWE, your wrestling name? Simply the best, Andrew Edwards. That's right. Simply the best. So not, not Drew So Icy. No, no, that that came later. That came later. Um, so yeah, so WWE. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the hands on with WWE 2K18. Yeah. Um, and then SummerSlam is that Sunday. Come back to Seattle for a day. Fly back to New York for the Galaxy Note 8. And coinciding with the Galaxy Note 8, there's something. They haven't even told me about it. It's still under NDA. Something with KFC, Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken, and VR. So I'm going to be doing Galaxy right. Note 8 launch. I, I think this calls for some speculation. What, what, Ga- what is KFC Galaxy, launching? So does this have anything to do with the Galaxy Note 8? Yes, it does. And KFC, and did you say VR? VR. Virtual reality. Virtual reality. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm, tr- I'm just know. trying to imagine what this could entail. What a teaser. Frying chicken in virtual, I don't know. I don't know, but I will be doing a video on of that as well. Whatever it is. Yes, whatever it is. So I'll be calling into the show next week. I won't be here physically. I'll be out again. But I'll be calling in to give an update on uh, everything about the Galaxy S. Galaxy Note 8. Okay, good. Note 8. You know what I realized? I spent like 15 minutes doing the slides, and I didn't do any You didn't the advance the slides. I didn't advance the slides. You didn't slides. advance the slides. <laughs> wow. Advance the slides just so people okay, can get so a look at your work. This. So as we Oh, by the way. So there yes, we go. It, hey, if you, <laughs> don't forget, subscribe to Geared Up. Just go to geekwire.com slash geared up or youtube.com slash gear live for the live stream. Okay. Also, search for Geared Up on your favorite podcast player. Do that. All right, so there's the iPhone 8. iPhone 8. iPhone 8. Shout out to Danny Winget for that one. Don't forget, subscribe. And there's our Echo. Echo giveaway. And here's here's the T-Mobile Revel in case T-Mobile you T-Mobile Revel. There you go. Now you can see what it yeah. looks like right yeah. there. Yeah. So. Too bad. By the way, we did take some pictures. If you're watching on the video here. Right. We did take some pictures to compare so when here, we were out at the Seahawks training camp. So here today. we are. Here we are. This is the Galaxy S8. Right. Widescreen. Very nice. It's sharpest. I would say this looked even sharper on the... On the computer. On the, on the computer yeah. or the phone. So there we are, close up. Yep. Uh, iPhone 7. Here's the iPhone 7. Okay, so this is the picture from the iPhone 7. 7 Plus portrait mode, so you can see the background is blurred there. Front is in focus. But this is a more typical 4 by 3 aspect ratio, not the widescreen look that the Galaxy S8 provides. Yep. And then you got sort of a far away view on that regular iPhone 7. And so here comes the Revel, just so okay. you can see what it's like. Not so, bad. Not bad. Not a bad. little bit more blurry, not quite as crisp, but still a perfectly acceptable photo here. Absolutely. Yeah. And here it is a little bit closer absolutely. up. I mean, this For $125, you doesn't seem like yeah. you can go wrong here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the last thing I think we were going to talk about here was the, the Surface mm, devices. Right. Consumer Reports withdrew its recommendation for the Microsoft Surface family of devices based on reports of s- sort of faulty issues that okay. some of the folks ran into then were reporting to consumers consumer reports um microsoft what do you think about this so microsoft uh, essentially said this was largely skewed by surface book and surface pro devices which were in upon launch in 2014 2015 th- they did have some problems right. microsoft acknowledged but they think that the consumer reports survey was not reflective of the actual consumer experience okay. that maybe if people had the occasional frozen screen or small software issues you know it wasn't that the devices were faulty it's just that they weren't as reliable as they okay. should have been so right. that that was microsoft's response uh not, uh, that's not a very doesn't make me feel better about the surface doesn't you say yeah. that but maybe I do i'm think, not uh, explaining their position yeah, well i think enough. consumer reports is uh they don't really they're not the most trustworthy when it comes to, like not anymore um, not like they used to be. Uh, there's way more people you can find to do testing on devices, even on YouTube, who will do so and show you their testing process. While Consumer Reports, they don't even tell you, you know, how many people did you survey? How many of them had the issue? Like, did they survey 100 people and eight people had the issue and therefore 8%? Like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Like, they don't tell us their sample size. They don't tell us their process. And if you if you can't be... Uh, transparent about the process, then how can I trust the yeah. process? So, so I'm, I'm looking. I don't know. At, I'm looking at Microsoft's response here, as reported by Paul Thorat, who uh, got the internal memo from Panos Panay. Ah, uh, your talking boy. Talking about the consumer boy. reports. Now, now he wants. Now he has something to say <laughs> when he wants to protect himself. So, according to Paul Thorat, uh, 
the Surface customers are still very happy with their purchases, as evidenced by what they call the Net Promoter Score, which okay. is obviously very, which is apparently very strong for these devices. He also suggests that what Consumer Reports calls a quote failure is perhaps overly broad, and that some incidents, like a frozen screen or unresponsive touch, are not quote failures, but are rather just minor incidents that are easily rectified by why the is, user. Why is it minor? <laughs> why is it a minor well, a failure? Suggests that you're never using the thing again. Correct, but. If my device keeps freezing up and needs yeah. to be rebooted, I'm not. Well, there's just a minor problem with yeah. my device. Like, no, that's a problem still. It's not. It hasn't failed, but minor is also kind of downplaying things, in my opinion. Bottom line, Microsoft's contention is that they've moved past any issues, okay. any of these issues that they might have had. And if you get a new device, you're not going to run into the problems that Consumer Reports is reporting. Fair enough. So fair enough. All right. Well, hey, you got a busy week. Busy week. Up. Yes. And yes, uh, I got to I got to get this uh, Alexa device uh, out in the mail to Brian O'Keefe. OK, Brian O'Keefe. Congrats <laughs> again. And yeah, so we'll be back next week. I will be on the phone in f on the phone or FaceTime or whatever we need to do um, reporting from New York from the Galaxy Note 8 event. But yeah, I'm looking forward for to seeing. Week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they unveil and hearing what you think about it. Nice. All right. Until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We'll talk to you on Geared Up.